like to use this video to demonstrate the concept of gain staging. So I've got this little sketch here. Let's just play it. And on the face of it, everything seems fairly well balanced. You can see I've got a lot of uh, headroom on each of the channels here as far as the volume fader is concerned. But there's actually a separate volume that runs into any EQ or compressors or any devices that I add to that channel. So I'm going to solo the kick here and I'm going to take a closer look. So you can see here that uh, the fundamental frequency of my kick here is kind of around 52, 52 hertz. And um, we're actually peaking here at about 14 and a half dBs. Okay, so that's quite hefty uh, low end for a kick. And you know, I might be tempted to actually pull down some of this volume using an EQ. But if I come over here and have a look at the volume running into this EQ, you can see that it's actually clipping. Now, if I was to pull down the volume fader, like so, you can see that the volume running into the EQ hasn't changed. This volume runs in pre-fader. So it's independent of the, uh, the volume fader here. Uh, and that's something to be a little bit careful of because for instance, if I was to add a compressor, you can see that the compressor is responding to the signal before I even set up any processing. So we're actually clipping going into the compressor and out. So what's actually going on here? Let's have a little look inside the, uh, the clip. Now, whilst the clip container volume is set to zero dBs here, you can actually see that the, uh, the individual kicks are actually pushing outside the container region. So let's turn it down a little bit. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. What I want to do is really make sure that I've got enough headroom that's going to run into the EQ or compressor or whatever I've got set up pre-fader. Okay, so that's kind of looking good. Let's just solo our kick. Let's have a little look at uh, what's going on here as far as the volume pre-fader going into the EQ is concerned. So it's a lot less. Let's double click our kick here. Look at the fundamental frequency. So we're actually now around 11 and a half dBs. So we've managed to reduce the level uh, quite a bit. It's, it's, looking, it's looking a lot better. Um, and the compressor isn't responding to um, the signal. Um, and that's great because I haven't actually set up anything in the compressor. So again, the volume that runs into our EQ or compressor or whatever else we've got uh, set up is pre-fader. So it doesn't matter what I've got set up on my channel fader volume, this signal runs in independently pre-fader. So, you know, I'd probably have to rebalance this with the rest of the track. Let's turn it up a little bit here. But at least that way we avoid the clipping. So I've got another project here and uh, again things seem fairly well balanced. I've got a lot of headroom here uh, on the channel volume faders you can see. But again what's going on behind the scenes? Um, now I've got some third party synths and uh, this is quite an important thing. Um, a lot of third party synths run quite hot. So here you can see I've got an instance of uh, the FM8 and uh, this is giving us this, this flute sound. And then I've also got a bass line in Massive as well. So let's come first of all to the FM8. I'm gonna solo it and we'll have a little look. So as you can see, the volume is actually just beginning to clip here. Okay, and again, you know, that's gonna affect the signal going into uh, the various devices that we've got. And the whole point about this digital clipping is it's going to add nasty artifacts. So what we want to do is come into the FM8 here and just reduce this output volume. So let's just bring this down. And don't be too scared to, you know, make quite a considerable change in volume. You can see now this is running fine. We're also going to be taking a little bit of volume out with any EQs that we might add um, as well. I've softened the sound with some reverb as well. So I may find that I need to add a little bit more volume back in after this reverb. Now to do that, what I might use is a utility. 
and I'm just going to give maybe 3 dBs back in. Okay. But the whole point, again, is this volume that's running in pre-fader. Uh, we just need to make sure that we've got enough headroom traveling in from one device to the other. And at the end of the chain, if you know we've done a good job, the signal's a little bit low, we can use something like a utility to bring that volume back up. So next up, let's have a little look at the bass. Now, Massive is quite notorious at, uh, at clipping uh, with its volume. So let's have a little look. And yeah, you can see with the volume set of Unity here, it's running into the red. So again, what I'm gonna do is just back this down, give ourselves enough headroom here. And then again, the volume running into um, our chain here is, is not clipping. So you see the compressor is not responding necessarily as well, just to reduce some of those peaks. So I might just lower the threshold a little bit here. Let's put it back on with the track. You can also see in uh, the Luftikus EQ here that we're starting to clip. I've boosted uh, some frequencies here. So what I might want to do now is actually just back down the gain again making sure that the signal path isn't clipping at any point. Let's turn it up here. 